and welcome back. All right, so today's video is the fourth one that I've actually done in a series on torque and angular acceleration. So this problem I've actually seen before is about a solid cylinder. I think they've all been solid cylinders so far. And there is a cord or something wrapped around it. And somebody is pulling it. And so the cylinder is actually moving in this direction. So the cylinder, the center of mass, is moving in this problem. So, but there's not just this force of this rope that's pulling it, that's wrapped around it, but there's also, in the problem, it says there is a friction along the ground. So it also says that it is, there is not a slip slip in this problem. So no slipping in the following problem. So our goal then, normally, you know, I would actually try and find acceleration, but let's try and do something different. Instead of finding acceleration, let's actually solve this problem for, let's actually solve it for F. Boy, that was just a good looking question mark. So let's see if we can solve this one for F at this point. All right, so let's go ahead and do this first. Let's kind of make a rigid body diagram here. That's why I haven't done too much. So we'll do a rigid body diagram. So we'll put this on here. And now let's start looking at what the forces on this object would be. So in the middle, we would have going straight down and mg in the middle. We would also have acting on the center gravity of this object, we would have a normal force straight up. We've got, uh, I'm not, normally I would call this a tension, but let's just call it some generic force pulling it that way. And let's just say there is a friction in the problem. So the friction would be working back against it this way. So here is our problem. So like all problems, we need to do two things. We need to do a sum of the forces X and a sum of the forces Y. So let's take a look at our sum of the forces X. Uh, we've got F, apparently big F, minus our little F for friction. And in the case of this problem, we actually, this, this object is moving, so it's not like those fixed cylinders we saw before. So in this case, we actually say that that's equal to an MA, and then our Y, N minus MG, is equal to a zero. Now, since this object is, it does have a rotation, so it's got some angular velocity here. Uh, then we also need to do a torque equation with this. So here we go. So let's do our torque. Well, we know that these torques are equal to I alpha, but here's the thing. If you take a look, the force and the friction, I really want you to notice something. Look at my picture. Assign a clockwise counterclockwise to this torque. If you actually look, this force... That force is a clockwise. That's going to make a clockwise torque. This is what really screws people up. Now look at the friction. The friction is also, remember our pivot point, and I should have said it earlier in the problem and didn't, but my pivot point is going to be, in this case, right in the middle. So if you take a look, both of these torques are in the same direction, and that's what makes this problem kind of neat. So we're going to say that this thing has a radius of R, just for the purpose of our problem. So I'm going to say that FR plus lowercase FR for my frictional torque, that's equal to I alpha. And I hate to tell you, but those famous words, the physics is over, comes into play. 
So you should have a lot of intuition now. FR plus lowercase FR is equal to, it's a solid cylinder. I'm getting sick of the solid cylinders. We need some hollow things, maybe a sphere even. But anyway, uh, that would be MR square. Again, we know, I hope you know by now, that A is equal to R alpha. So A over R. And check this out. R cancels square. R, R, R. I sound like an angry pirate. Actually, it could be a happy pirate. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So F plus lowercase f is equal to one half M A. And I said I wanted to try something different. So we've got two good equations. Let's try this. What if... Here's one of our equations. Now, granted, there's nothing wrong with that n minus mg. It's just we don't have a mu, so we don't really need it. Let's do something. Let's actually take these two equations, and let's solve for friction. So let's do something. We could either solve for f and then substitute, or a. Let's, do, let's make it a little harder. Let's solve for acceleration. Uh, let's grab this guy up here and solve that for acceleration because that would be kind of easy. F minus little f over m is equal to a. And now let's substitute that into our torque equation. So we've got f plus little f equals one half m times f minus f over m. And now we just need to do a little algebra on this. And what would also be nice if I could actually click that extend the page button instead of just drawing blue ink. All right, so now this is kind of neat. Check this out. My m's actually cancel. So I end up with, let's move that 2. So that's 2f plus 2 lowercase f equals. Now this is just a cute little solution, isn't it? So let's do a little something here. Um, now this is interesting. Let's do something. I'm going to bring f this way and da, 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 just like that. So we're going to have 3f equals f minus 2f. Well, that would be negative f. So check it out. So the frictional force is negative f over 3. So that's kind of cool. Now if we wanted to go back, we could try and solve for a or something else. But anyway, that's an interesting little problem in there. And it also makes sense uh, in terms of how everything lays out. Friction probably is less than the force that's being applied to it. So anyway, that's a neat little problem. And so we're going to cut this video off there. So anyway, thanks for watching and hanging out with me today. Later. Bye.